Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're traveling down to Alabama to speak about a 22-year-old inmate by the name of Daniel Williams. He ended up losing his life just weeks before going home. So I'm going to read this article that breaks down exactly where and how all this went down. And of course, I'll give my two cents at the end. Now, before I read this article, let me play a quick clip from me three years ago. I named what I believe was the most dangerous top 10 prisons in the country. What state do y'all think I'm about to name? Number one on the list. Alabama, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Alabama, one of the most dangerous states to do time in in this freaking country is Alabama. But the main reason why I picked Alabama is because of all the sexual assaults. But the article says an Alabama inmate has died days after being tortured beaten and sexually assaulted by a prison gang just two weeks before he was due to be released, his family claims. Like I said, we've done stories like this in the past with people dying right before they went home. Big piece of advice for y'all, man. Sometimes it's almost impossible, but try to for the most part, if not all the way to the end, keep your release date to yourself, man. You'd be surprised how many inmates, especially in a higher level prison, will try to trick that up or just keep you from going all together. You just don't know, man. I believe some of the most dangerous times of doing time is going home. It says Daniel Williams, 22, was serving just a 12-month sentence for a funky second-degree theft at Staten Correctional Facility in Elmer. But it says that the warden found him unresponsive in the dorm on October 22nd. The inmate and the father of two was declared brain dead upon his arrival at the hospital. He was taken off life support on November 5th and died four days later. The warden allegedly told his family that Williams suffered a drug overdose, but insiders at the prison told the Alabama political reporter that he had been kidnapped, bound, assaulted, and sold out by other inmates for two or three days. Sold out, meaning, you know, anything you can do, you can do to him. Just try not to kill him, you know, sexually, physically, anything, man. You know, there's this one guy I seen fight one time, and it really made me realize that some of these guys, they just got built in rage, man. And they will do things like it's almost like something's taking control of them. This one guy, man, he was winning the fight. The other guy didn't want nothing. And he would just talk normal. Then all of a sudden, snap and punch him again. You know, just like some animalistic, psychotic type shit. You know, even though he wanted to do, wasn't going to do nothing. You know, it's just that evilness in him. Wanted to hit him again, beat him. So, you know, that's how a lot of these guys end up dying. Some of these dudes probably take it too rough on him. They don't think he's going to die. You know, he might get knocked out or whatever, but when he don't wake up, he might still be breathing, but he's brain dead. It says at least 12 prison cops at Staten Correctional Facility, along with an adjoining Elmore and Draper prisons, have been arrested for assaulting inmates in the last two years. Okay, that's a good little recap. Yeah, there has been a lot of stuff like that going on. I think they're just trying to spice up the article a bit, you know, give a little background on what's going on in the Alabama prison system. The federal investigators have also been probing the state of Alabama and its prisons since a scathing lawsuit was lodged at the Department of Justice in 2019. The prisoner's father, Terry Williams, and his stepmother, Taylor, alleged that their son's body showed signs of physical abuse, including that his hands were bound. The couple claims Williams' doctor described the alleged abuse as unlike anything he had ever seen throughout his 30 years in medical career. Wow, he probably had bruising all up and down his body. He makes some goofy faces. Daniel Williams' mother and fiance have fond memories of a young man lost too soon. He was a goofball, was what he was. <laughs> Always Daniel. aggravating. They were notified last week by the warden at Staten Prison in Elmore County that the 22-year-old was in a hospital for an overdose. But when they rushed to be by his side, they were shocked by his condition. I went to the hospital and the nurses told me that he was assaulted and beat really badly. And when I went into the room, he had bruises all down his arm, like down to his fingers. He had bruises over here. He had cuts up and down. He had bruises on his legs, and it was bad. His father says he had very little brain function left, so they made the difficult decision to take him off life support. Williams was taken to the Jackson Hospital after having suffered a reported drug overdose at the prison. His family was not notified of his hospitalization until three days later, on October 25th. They then visited him at the facility and observed bruises and injuries indicative of assault on his body. They said they went to the hospital and they seen that his wrists looked like they had been bound. Well, look, when, he, when they're transporting him, 
uh, even if he's knocked out or something, brain dead or anything like that, you know, those cuffs, he ain't got control of it. So all the pressure will go on those hands. I'm not saying he wasn't bound. I'm just saying it could have been the cuffs as well. They hurt and they still leave prints even though you're knocked out. But you got inmates telling, you know, these prison reporters that this is how the situation really went down. And to be completely honest, I believe them damn inmates before anybody else right about now. But after Terry seen all the marks and bruising on him, that's when he wanted to call the warden and asked him why the hell did he say his son died from an overdose? when obviously it looked like it was from a beating. And all the warden could say after that was, it's under investigation. I called the warden and I cussed him out. Uh, I was like, dude, you know this is not an overdose case. You know exactly what happened. How, how's this crap gonna happen like this? Well, it's under investigation right now. And that's the last time I even talked to the warden. Oh man, that's that line there. I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. I'm under investigation. Stay away. <laughs> In addition to the bruising and apparent binding, the nurse told her and Mr. Williams that there were visible handprint bruises between Daniel's legs. Damn. The family said that they asked for a rape kit to be conducted, but claims that the request was initially denied. They alleged hospital staff finally examined him on November 1st after a lawyer got involved. The results of the kits are yet unclear. The hospital removed Williams from life support on November 5th, and the 22-year-old was transferred to a medical ward at Kilby Correctional Center on November 9th. He died shortly after his arrival. Carla Crowder with Alabama Appleseed says what happened to Daniel is all too common. The brutality, the violence, the dysfunction, it's not an aberration anymore. It's a feature of the Alabama Department of Corrections. It is our system. How am I supposed to tell her about her daddy? Like, why is he here? Why didn't he ever come home? I, I grew up without my dad, and it sucked. So I, I couldn't even imagine. I set up a GoFundMe account to get him cremated. It's like a thousand bucks. I was wanting to bury him by my mom, but that's like seven grand, you know. I can't afford that. Now you can do your own research on the Alabama prison system and it is pretty crazy. Just a simple Google search and you'll find out that there's a lot of people dying. A lot of people living in some horrible conditions. And everything that I heard is mainly because that the COs ain't doing nothing. Who are these people and why are they hiring them? Because they ain't saving no lives for real. Only the strong surviving in Alabama and the majority of them prisons. And you know, you wouldn't expect stuff like this to happen on a 12 month sentence. And that means, you know, he went through the court process which he was in jail probably for a few months then got sentenced to the 12 months so he was probably only in prison for like six months how could something like this happen to someone so fast well let me paint a quick picture for you maybe he messed up right off the jump telling people man i shouldn't even be here i only got five four months left why am i in prison you know, I'm just painting a picture here. Maybe the wrong person heard that and said, you know what, I'm going to take advantage of this guy. I've seen plenty of videos where, uh, you know, younger, weaker looking white guys are being controlled by the other inmate out of pure fear. It ain't even because of a habit. They just don't want to die. That's what it boils down to in some of these prisons. But also, you know, he could have had a habit. He came in there, said he was going to party the little bit of months in prison that he had left. Ran up a debt with the wrong guy, couldn't pay it back, and somehow became homeboy's property in a sense. He said he's going to sell him off to everybody before he goes home. Probably had no idea that he was going to die from it. You know, so there's so many different scenarios on how this could have started. But one thing's for sure, they prey on the weak. If I were to guess, he didn't have nobody on his side, no friends, no nothing. Another thing that kind of uh, shocks me as well is they said this is a dorm setting. All right, I've done time in a dorm. Dorms are filled with hundreds of people with no cell doors. It's just a big open bay. And I've seen the majority of prison snitches in those type of facilities. They'll tell on a frog farting in the wind. You know, so for something like this to be happening for days tells you a lot about the population as well. I told y'all in the past, man, when situations like this happen, the best thing for people to do is to look the other way. You do not want to be a part of it, especially, you know, what they said to the reporters that it was a gang. If you went against them in any way, shape, or form, they're going to steamroll you as well. You're trying to go home just like old Daniel was. And that's why people just look the other way. If they're in your way, then you just step over them and keep it moving. I mean, yeah, you can be that good Samaritan, but you're running the risk of getting thrown into the mix. 
possibly losing your life. It's just like uh, out here in the streets, you see someone robbing the bank, you're gonna run in there full speed, try to tackle them. Chances are the majority of people, they're gonna get down on the ground, throw out their wallet, cell phone, whatever they ask for. And the people outside, they ain't running in, they're hiding behind the bushes. Sometimes you just gotta play your position and in prison, when shit's going down, your position is to not be around. <laughs> But another serious note is the guy had bruising on the inside of his legs. So that tells me that someone was trying to pry his legs open. Why else would there be handprints, bruises on the inside? You know, so the bruising's right there is almost a guaranteed fact that he was probably sexually assaulted. The warden said they're investigating the situation and who knows? The way that this story's been spreading throughout social media, they might really get to the truth. And if I were to guess, if I were to bet it all right now, those inmates saying that he was tied up and used for days is telling the truth. I'm a gambling man, and that's why I bet it all on. But my condolences go out to his family. You know, it's a sad story. Another child's gonna be raised without their dad. Just left to wonder what kind of guy he was. My mom's dad died when she was young. So she was left with not many memories of him. He was actually gunned down, I believe, in a bar in Columbia, if I remember correctly. But from the photos that I see, man, he was handsome. I definitely got some of these good looks from him. And of course, my pop's a gringo. He's got great genes. <laughs> He's doing good too, man. I'm going to be seeing him for Thanksgiving. Can't wait. Maybe I'll make a video with him. But like I said, my condolences go out to the family, man. And uh, just to repeat what I said in the beginning, if anybody happens to be taking the road to the penitentiary, try to keep that release date private all the way to the end. But you know, you can avoid all this stuff if you just follow the law. Anyways, I'm out of here. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, like I said in the beginning, tap that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. Go check out my Etsy page. I got a Black Friday sale going on right now with my two pieces of artwork. My third piece will be done in a couple weeks. It's beautiful. But the Black Friday deal is for 20% off. Anybody who favorites my page. And stay tuned. I got another crazy story coming your way about someone that stabbed someone over 40 times and left him to die in a driveway in a suburban neighborhood. Crazy turn of events though, the guy that stabbed him and killed him ended up getting stabbed over 50 times in dying in prison. Crazy turn of events, so be on the lookout for that. But as always, until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.